Did you know that the structural engineering industry is expected to grow by more than 10% over the next decade? That's huge. It's a field that not only shapes our cities, but also impacts our daily lives. In this episode, Ryan Johnson, PE civil structural engineer at Titan Delta, will share his insights on the importance of mentorship and continuous learning in the engineering field. Whether you're an inspiring engineer or a seasoned professional, these insights may inspire you to make your own impactful career choices. I'm your co-host, Matt Picardle. And I'm your co-host, Rachel Holland, and this is the Structural Engineering Channel. Before we get started, here's a quick word from our sponsor for the episode, PPI, a Kaplan company. This episode of the Structural Engineering Channel is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the PE structural exam. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE structural exam the first time. PPI's PE structural course is fully updated and taught with October 2021 code references and includes new editions of their PE structural books. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. PPI has helped engineers achieve their licensing goals since 1975. Check out PPI today at PPI, the number two, pass.com to see all of the resources available for PE structural exam prep. Again, that's PPI, the number two, P-A-S-S.com. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what led you to your current role at Titan Delta? Hey, Ben. Uh, yeah, thank you. I I guess to start off, I have been an engineer since 2014 when I graduated. And from there, I've been at a couple firms. But if I was to generally say what I've worked on, it would be a decent balance between civil and structural. Currently, I'm at Titan Delta. It is more in the oil and gas sector. And prior to that, I was more in the roads, reconstruction, uh, civil design, and and private design as well. I learned a lot through all those different avenues, but I, I still do consider myself pretty much a generalist in the profession, you know? But uh, yeah, it would be interesting to one day specialize into something. What do you mean by a journalist in it? What, what do you mean by that? Oh, oh generalist. a generalist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Generalist. I think Sorry. The, I was like, wait, what? Okay. Sorry. My bad. I think of the doctors, uh, general practitioners yeah. and how, you know, as opposed to being a specialist in pre stressed concrete, let's say. Yeah. It seems like oil and gas is pretty specialized too. I've never dealt with that too. That seems interesting. Yeah, it is. Um, there is a lot of heavy, there's a lot of heavy CAD, Navis works. There's a lot of coordination between disciplines. There's a lot of a lot of laser scans, a lot of exactness, as opposed to something that would be maybe a residential uh, structural project where you can just go to the site and check it out, maybe go back a couple times. You really have to, if you go up there, you go up, you go up to the sites for a lot of reasons. You go there for a lot of checklists. So you only get a few chances to really see the site, which is, which is good in a way. As a remote worker, I'm used to kind of going after projects from a distance and getting all the information. So it, does, it did seem to fit uh, in my role to grow into this type of this type of engineering, I would say. That's cool. It sounds like you've had a couple of, like, you know, you've had a few different roles at different companies. And obviously that would come with some pivotal moments in how you make decisions about your career. So can you kind of share some of those pivotal moments and how those decisions have made an impact on where your career has taken you? Sure. I would say uh, one of my first assignments was this really interesting project. It was it was in New York. It was a train project. They're going to build uh, the, the East Side Access Project underneath Grand Central and Access more Long Island Railroad uh, capacity to that terminal. And it was really fun to be part of that as a GEC reviewing shop drawings and doing all the things that are post design and. I guess from that, I, I learned a lot about the construction side of it, at least in terms of Samil's RFIs and processing that. But, you know, it also was about year three or four for me. 
And it was at a pace where I was able to spend my nights studying and eventually passing the PE. So it was in a, I, I realized it was a good situation. And a lot of people I know, the PE is just, it's a mountain to climb, especially if you don't pass it the, the first time. So finding that time where you're available to really put away hours of studying was, was insightful. But from there, I went off to another firm in Long Island. And I was trying to pursue a little bit more high risk out of my comfort zone, structural, commercial design, residential design in New York. And um, it was a good, fast paced experience. It taught me a lot about local codes and support of excavation design, which I thought was pretty interesting. I'd love to get back into uh, support of excavation work at some point. But that inevitably uh, led to me get in touch with my old mentor who started a company and he he asked if, if I was interested in working with them and that ultimately was one of my biggest moments was deciding to go work with my mentor from afar with him and that experience was really great because I got to come in with my structural skills that I've learned throughout that time and I also got to pair that with the internship time with that mentor which led me to be a civil structural engineer because I eventually started to work on road projects that are longer and go for months and months. But then I would also have a couple of small uh, residential projects for structural. So there's a little bit of that balance. And then eventually I got to a point where I somehow was stamping $60 million worth of roads. So I don't know how that happened. So I was grateful for that experience. It really was. I haven't, I haven't gotten to the point of stamping my own structural set though. I will admit, which I'm okay with, I'm, I'm happy to be amongst people that are skilled and experienced and able to check, you know, because there's a lot, to, there's a lot to consider, especially with uh, standing structures. Yeah. A lot of liability. Yeah, <laughs> <That's> what, for <laughs> sure. So I work with buildings a lot. They're just like, yeah, there's a lot of liability and all that stuff. So <laughs> I think that's the right call. <laughs> yeah. How's, how's your, so it seems like you're pretty well-rounded in terms of, uh, you were mentioning road reconstruction and structural engineering. How has that, how have those backgrounds influenced your development as uh, the engineer that you are today? I think them as two entities helped me be a, a decent or have a decent understanding of project engineering, the concept of project engineering, dealing with the client, whatever that would entail to you. To me, that entails maybe dealing with the client or dealing with external factors, such as other contractors or fabricators or anything that you need to pull together. Uh, so it helped me with that part, kind of being able to get the confidence to reach outward, this out, outside of the company, outside of a manager, and it helped me get to that point. And I think structural was good as a initial help for civil because... The tend I had tendencies for different styles for call outs and things like that in structural. And I thought some of that helped pretty well with uh, call outs in civil, just the struct, just the formatting of it. But some of that all just goes back to engineering standards, regardless of what discipline you're in. So I think, it, I think it was just something I was excited to do given the opportunity. If that, if, if something comes up, I would mo like, I would most likely. Yeah, when I was in school, I wanted to be a civil engineer, basically. And that could be a wide variety of things. So I think if I was in uh, college, I would be happy with this line of progress so far. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like either, I think that's pretty cool because you can, I think you, you've, you're confident in learning different things, like going from roadside construction to structural. And either way you go, you can figure it out. You got, you know, you know how to learn new things. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah, I think it's yeah. great too because with a civil, you know, with a civil PE, it gives you kind of a broad ability to tackle all these different sorts of areas, and you're kind of diving into that. You know, you're really taking advantage of like that opportunity, which is cool. What about for for you and and for your professional growth? What tools would you say have been like pretty crucial, and you think help structural engineers like along their career journey? I, I mean, having a really good set of personal lessons learned or any sort of any sort of kind of private thought database that you've collected to yourself throughout the years is good. But uh, externally, things such as 
being open-minded to the next Autodesk plugin or maybe um, maybe talking your company into utilizing a program like Intercalc or, or being open-minded to MathCAD or something. Um, just the tools, just being open-minded to the tools. Because I've, I've definitely enjoyed learning the different types of ways you can do let's say storm stormwater analysis, stormwater drainage design. You can do it, you can actually do it through AutoCAD or you can do it with spreadsheets. So they're, yeah, that part's been a great growth is everything was spreadsheets in the beginning and now things have been, things have been just evolving um, year by year. So staying up on those and keeping current and knowing like what's available to help you succeed and stuff like that. Yeah, or or I guess stay open minded to them. You know, at the you don't want to be the earliest adopter, but you don't want to be at like maybe the third adopter. You know, like early early to mid adopter of a program. That way, you can kind of see how others are reacting to it, and maybe um, maybe you can get some guidance from people that have gone before you. You know, yeah, definitely. So I definitely learned through discussing most often with people. Yeah. Uh, what about the, uh, I'm curious about what your mindset is or what your, cause to me, it seemed like it would be scary going from civil to structural or vice versa, or just going to any profession. Like, like what's your mindset or how do you even develop uh, your expertise in something new? Like you, you had to develop expertise in I think the residential or mid-rise structures and temporary structures. What was it like going from one specialization to another, especially if it's in different fields? Uh, there's definitely a burn for a while of ca- of catching up and understanding uh, what the company or what the department uh, likes to do and what's what the standards require for that type of project, I would say. I can imagine from, let's say, you going to civil to structural, those are kind of different sub-disciplines. Were you just like, oh, yeah, I got this? Or were you, you, were you kind of going about it like, oh, this is a, a new new discipline that I'm not too sure about. How am I going to learn this? I guess, yeah, what was your mindset yeah. going into those different disciplines? I, I guess I'm glad I went into structural first because there's a lot of core key things from school that because I was structural disciplined in school and that led into structural um, my first structural job out of school uh, so I had a lot of built up information of that type and then I started learning survey work for those road projects and survey work was pretty interesting because it was more graphical it was more visual in front of you I was less less calculations you know it's a different way of thinking it's 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 a it's truly an art. I, I think surveyors are amazing. And from there, just, just kind of having an understanding of it over just exposure, that led into civil, you know, because you make the survey. Now that the survey is made, you can do the civil on top of it. So yeah, my uh, mentor, Bob Moore, he, he was good at kind of walking me through that over the course of half a year, where I would do maybe just survey work for half a year while doing structural, and then eventually doing civil for those same projects while doing structural. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was a good experience, I would say, in that in that way, in that in that flow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's like you're getting taught different things, you're learning about different aspects, and then that way you can develop your expertise instead of just completely just changing your whole career. It's kind of just you're getting a little bit of everything. Yeah, and I would also this reminds me, um, it's also about company size too because if you're at a small company i've been at companies that are pretty small for uh, a majority of it a good amount of my career and small companies it's it's always it's always helpful to be the one to willing to maybe do a little bit of the business development work or to do a little bit of the kind of weird uh gis contract that they that they were awarded so that's that would that's what got me excited was being at a small company that offered the option to step out of something for a moment and be the uh, not be the not be the, the EOR for that project, but just be an engineer for that project. That was that was what what made a good experience at Batcher. I think you bring up a good point. I one of my um, jobs that I had before joining Simpson was I worked for a small engineering firm too, and it was engineering and surveying. So 
it's one of those things that when you work at a small company, you kind of like all sort of end up doing a little bit of everything. You know, it's not like you really can focus in on something because it's like if you get a big job that's this other type of thing, they're going to need everybody's help, you know? And I remember plenty of days out there doing surveying with my boss at the time. And it's interesting to see, you know, like in real life, how stuff like that is done. And it's, we, we had to take a surveying class in college, but it was definitely a little bit different, you know, when you go and apply the skills in real life. So yeah, that's awesome that you, you had that opportunity too. What about, um, you mentioned when you were working in um, New York and you said Long Island. Yeah. That like, it gave you an opportunity to learn those codes. So like, where, where did you go to school? Like geographically, you said you're in North Carolina now, but like, have you had the opportunity to master local codes in like lots of different areas? And how has that been for you with, with moving around? And I mean, that obviously affects how you manage, you know, more complex projects. So how did, how have you dealt with that? Yeah, I actually uh, went to school in, in Louisiana at the time. My my future uh, spouse, we went to um, she had an opportunity to open up in New York, and I was working at a company in Louisiana for about half a year, and it was just kind of in our best interest to make the move up there and to do that. So I found myself in New York with no New York experience, just kind of figuring it out. And thankfully, the first job there was. Um, it was, it was just one mega project and they hired subcontractors within that group. So it was a good way to learn about one project. And then when I did work with the Long Island um, firm, that was kind of the opposite. It was more small projects and commercial and residential small projects. And it was uh, a lot more building codes. So the first one was more heavy transit structural transportations like subway structural you know which is specific in its own way so i was just along for the ride on um uh, on under the seniors under what what needed to get done you know and that was an exciting project uh being underground seeing that you can do these things with concrete to hold the, the earth back and walking on the ground and seeing the geotechs walk walk under there and say oh that's fine and i'm like no the rock looks like it's cracking right there they're like no it's good so, yeah, especially being from uh, an area where there is no rock, ge- where there's not really much rock ge- geology, uh, it was pretty fascinating to experience that. So has like your ability to sort of master these different local codes, has it, do you think it helped to like advance your career or anything like that? Or um, I would say that it, had I stayed at the uh, Long Island Company, it was a major emphasis for a lot of the projects within that company there were a, New York has a whole laundry list of special inspections for lots of different um, aspects of, of a project whether that's the concrete or photo what was it uh, pre you had to do you had to do an inspection for pre and post it's more for insurances but um, it just showed me that that people within the firm were taking courses on specific certifications that you don't necessarily need if you're not a PE. So if you have a PE, you have certain, you consider a certain level inspector for different disciplines. Yeah, I think you were mentioning uh, maybe some of your colleagues taking some of those certifications that were based on the code. Like that's how complex the codes are. <laughs> or just yeah. like, is that right? You need to take a, some more classes just to understand the code better specific to New York. Right, yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe one of them took something regarding ACI which uh, was new to me. That was that was really um, that was really proactive of them to go to go after that because that's something that would theoretically be covered already within your curriculum and within your design practice. But going to something like that in a group of people that may not be PEs, you you'll still learn a lot and you'll still be amongst people that are physically doing the work or overseeing the work. Oh yeah, that's a different perspective. Yeah, with like yeah. the people that are actually pouring the concrete and. Lap in the rebar. Yeah. How can uh, engaging in consulting or even pro bono work, like how can that stuff help you grow professionally and help you expand your network in the industry? Yeah. I would say when I was in New York, I started working with the community engineering corps for a couple of years, just on a real part-time routine basis. And that's where I was able to stamp my first project, which was through the, the CEC's pro bono licensing. Uh, because it's a nonprofit, 
And that's one of the benefits wow. of that group is that you can do engineering work for them and you donate your time. And as in exchange, you get insurance liability through them and you get to do, you know, do good. But uh, that was a great exposure. I got to meet some great people. I got to stay in my first drawing. So pro bono, what was the other one? Yeah, like how about uh, consulting work? No, oh, um, consulting work, I haven't... Hey. I haven't really done consulting work. I, it's always been appealing because there's always someone in your family or in your life that would want to be like, hey, can you look at this? Can you do this? All the time. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> feel so helpless because I would love to, but you know, there's so much that goes into that. And I, I'd i like to be able to uh, pull the trick on it one day, but you need to insure yourself and take and protect yourself first. Set up a firm, I imagine. Unless, of course, you're just looking at drawings and offer casual. You have to be really careful with that. You can't just offer casual advice, especially for structural, you know. So, I don't know. I would say um, it, it demands respect if you want to pursue consulting. Yeah, um, even like with, yeah. The, with the team too. I mean, yeah, I, we get those requests from family members, right? On, oh, yeah, you're an engineer. Can you stamp this and or look at this? And it's like... Uh, it depends on what engineering it is. <laughs> and then yeah. there's 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 so many disciplines involved in it too, right? Like architectural, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, civil. And it's, yeah. It sometimes becomes just you can look at something, but it's yeah, it's, it's such a team effort. There's there's a lot that goes into our structures. Well, I yeah. think the other thing is too is being smart and honest about what you don't know. You know, like you don't want to go look at some sort of a structural job that you've never really worked on before and be like, "Oh yeah, we I could do this." Like, surely, you know, because there's there's things that maybe you're not aware of or whatever. So, like yeah. knowing what you don't know, I guess. Yeah, trusting yourself for sure. Yeah, trusting trusting that you will uh, make the right call uh, when when those opportunities pop up. Mm -hmm. For sure. What about Ryan? One one question we like to ask all of our guests is if you have any sort of advice or words of wisdom that you could share with younger engineers who are looking to progress their careers in structural or sort of civil engineering. Like if you just had some tidbits of advice that you'd like to share, what would that what would those be? Yeah. Yeah. Find find yourself in a find yourself in a in a in a company that has a good that has great people obviously always look for the great always look for great people that have your that have your uh, best interests at heart and entrust in that i would say if you if you are really eager to learn a certain discipline or if you're really eager to go a certain way work with your company but inevitably if you need to strengthen in something go go somewhere else to grow that skill set because your career is a is a culmination of where you've been so if you need to, yeah, so you need to, you need to culminate your experience. Um, so basically don't be scared to take a jump if it's, uh, if it's going to help you grow in a certain area. Right. Yeah. That's great in, advice. In the sake of growth, it's, it's a move. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, Ryan. It was awesome to have you on the podcast. Thanks for sharing some of your experience and yeah, it's been great having you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Ryan. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. We would love to hear your feedback, comments, and or questions. To leave them, please visit structuralengineeringchannel.com. There you'll find the summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, as well as links to any of the resources or websites mentioned during it. Don't forget to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, we wish you the best in all of your structural engineering endeavors.